Well guys, thank you for clicking on the video. So yes, I, this is the new and improved 2023 Night Drive TV installation video for the Sleepy Eye Headlight Kit. Uh, the triplets, as I call it, this applies to the squares, this applies to the rounds. Uh, this has much more in-depth, uh, basically, footage of the early version cars, which is about 97 to mid-2000, then mid-2000 to 04. So I have video of the actual installation. I've taken all the feedback from the past year and a half of people installing the Night Drive TV headlight kits all around the world, I'm proud to say, and all that feedback has come in for this third iteration of the installation video. Let me tell you ahead of time that as you see the length of the video, that is intimidating to some people, but let me assure you that I have made this a step-by-step -step procedure uh, so that literally anybody can follow along if you just have some basic tools, all of which I show you. If you're a flat rate guy or you're a shop guy installing this for someone, uh, let me just also assure you that if you just take the time to follow along, you're gonna do the second side very quickly. Uh, for shop guys, the average is about two hours to install these. I think for your amateur everyday home mechanic guys, you're looking at four to six hours. But you know, my goal with this video was to really reduce that, to get you prepared, know what you need, and really take you step by step. Uh, a lot of the issues and emails and kind of technical assistance that I've done over the past year and a half has led me to understand what I need to highlight more and kind of point out more in this video. So that's gonna be done here. So you shouldn't have any problems. Please don't be intimidated. This is, at the end of the day, these are headlights. Uh, this is just a basic procedure and you're gonna be on the road in no time. So that being said, let me just point out that there are some quirks uh, when it applies to the early cars versus the late. There were also some GM wiring inconsistencies that will lead to certain lights or certain halos lighting up uh, not illuminating, uh, certain things not working. And, I, and a lot of people thought that that was something wrong with the kit. It led to an email. Well, I can tell you the kits are double tested uh, two times before they're boxed. The likelihood of you having any issues is very small. Uh, the point is, is that this video will show you how to troubleshoot those things. Uh, and you will have no issues if you follow this video step by step. Skipping along and trying to go too quickly is going to lead to you probably taking a lot more time to get to the end uh, because you're going to run into issues. Uh, so that applies to everybody, amateur or uh, shop pro. Um, once you've done one of these, you're going to fly through uh, after that. It's super easy. For amateurs, I encourage you to just go ahead and sit down and watch through this video before you actually even approach the vehicle. If you have any intimidation about this process whatsoever, I'm telling you going through this video is going to relieve a lot of your tension. You're going to have a prepared feeling of how to go into it. And uh, hopefully no one has any issues at all whatsoever. So I want to thank you for supporting Night Drive TV and the efforts that I've had. We have a lot more products coming out ahead in 2023. And so let's go ahead and jump into the unboxing at the garage. And uh, we are going to show you what's in the box, what you need to expect, what tools you need. And then we're going to jump into the installation. Let's go ahead and do that. If you follow this procedure, I am telling you, you will have no problems whatsoever. I'm gonna do my best in this video to give wide views, narrow views, and I'm gonna pace it out, but you're gonna to wanna to use your pause button. You're gonna go step by step, pause your phone, and be sure that you can keep up with me. And I, like I said, I'm gonna put as many references in the video. There's a chapter system. Oftentimes, if you hit the bottom of the video, even on a phone, it will show you chapters. All those chapters are gonna be in this video. So I'm gonna to try to do everything I can to make this as easy as possible. Um, other than that, this is a video that's being uploaded in January. Well, actually it's February of 2023. This video and the kit that you see here is the, the kit that has been shipped since December of 2022. So anything prior to that, there will be some variations. Uh, this installation video will cover you if you have a kit Pretty much back to the beginning. The only little differences you may have is your stops might be a little bit different, uh, but overall what you see in this video is fine. So continue forward. So with that said, first I'm going to talk about the unboxing and this is when you open your box, this is what you're going to see. Um, I'm going to use a GoPro to kind of give you an alternate view and make this easy on myself. So switching down, this is what you're going to see when you open your box. Uh, obviously you've got a mega cool night drive TV sticker and, um, and you've got a piece of paper here. 
Anytime you get a kit, please pay attention to the paper on top. If we go through any supply shortages, any changes that's the, that this video wouldn't be able to cover, because I can't upload a new video every time something small changes, I, I will put that alert on this page. And so you can see I have a special tools alert. Uh, I have a contents uh, and things like that, which will uh, let you know what to expect. So put that aside. Then what you will see is the kit packaged. Uh, we try to have foam. Um, we are looking to have something custom cut for now. This is what we do. Uh, we cut each one. And let me go ahead and unbox this and show you exactly what's in the box. Okay, so in this box, you can see there are four key chambers in this foam. Each of these chambers contains something that you need. And then the metal stops will be placed in this gap right here. So they will be sitting in here. And so be sure... I don't care if you have to tear your foam out, be sure that you've checked and you've got everything that you need for the installation. Okay, so to highlight uh, a small variation, I'm gonna show you on screen. So there is an option when you order uh, to have the optional resistor. That resistor is looking like this. It will typically be in a bag. And beneath that in the center is typically where Lace packs the stops. And so, uh, this obviously could change if packaging changes, but this is what you should expect. And we're going to go ahead and take a better look here. So we're going to go ahead and pull everything out of the bags. And I'm going to kind of give you an overview, uh, a look at what everything should look like. Um, as of right now, this is how the kits are shipping. As I said, if there's any changes, um, certain feedback from certain customers will sometimes make me add something that I feel like is, hey, if we add this, it will make things a little better, a little tighter. Um, so I'm just gonna give you an example. And like I said, I always refer to that top sheet and it will tell you. Okay, so um, we're gonna take a look down at the table. So this is what you can expect. Uh, so basically your high beams are forward and these are your low beams. So the, when your high beams forward, this makes this the driver's side, this makes this the passenger side. Um, we have our all uh, six on high relay. Um, we have our bag of hardware. This is the optional resistor. We have two black stops that are basically um, just stabilizing stops. These are your main stops here, which are gonna do most of the work uh, to get the height correct. So uh, initially you need to know, this is your low beam, this is your high beam. This is your low beam, this is your high beam. Uh, when you get to step one, uh, when you're on low, these will turn on, this will be off. All halos will be lit. When you go to high beam, all halos will remain lit, but only the inside high beams will be on. Once you install the all six on high relay, that is how you get two lows outside, then high beam, everything lights. Halos should always be lit with the parking lights. All right, so in this view, we are taking a look at the tools that I would say uh, you should have on hand. Uh, it, obviously, these are all basic tools, but there's some specifics here that can help you. So um, I would say either have uh, a set of normal pliers like this or potentially some needle nose pliers, um, a set of dykes uh, to basically trim zip ties. Uh, we have a flat blade and a Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, this could assist you in getting the armature uh, off the headlight. This will be for bezels. Uh, so this is uh, a T15. Uh, obviously, it's kind of in a driver configuration. Um, I just have this on hand, um, but this removes uh, basically the top cover of your headlight lid. And alternatively, you can have something like this that accepts different types of bits. Uh, in this case, uh, there are bit sets from Harbor Freight, very affordable, that will have Torx assortments, at which point you can get a T15 and this T25 that you're going to need. But it will be preferable that you have a T25 that's short like this, not something like in a driver configuration, because there is a tight spot you have to get into. And there's a scenario to where you're going to want to kind of insert this. And unfortunately, it's going to be a little awkward, but you may have to hold it with a set of pliers just to hold um, the, the Torx from spinning. So you'll see that later in the video. Um, this is a 10 millimeter deep well. I have an extension here. This is a 13 millimeter. Uh, you could have a deep well, one of these, but basically just have a socket set. Uh, you can have ratchets. I have a power ratchet here. You can have a manual one. Um, for headlight adjustment, you have a quarter inch um, with an extension. That'll be helpful towards the end. 
And so looking over here, obviously you're going to need a tape measure to set your uh, opening height. And so I like to keep ratchet wrenches. So uh, this is an eight millimeter to disconnect your battery when you're doing your relay install. Um, we have a 10 millimeter, which can speed things up, not necessary. What, what would be necessary though is a 10 millimeter box and wrench that's you know non-ratcheting. It, it's got to be pretty thin to fit into that uh, position that it needs to go. And lastly, um, this is an E8. Uh, this is a ratchet wrench, as you can see. And so this is for adjusting uh, the headlights. You can see it's like a Torx socket in a sense um, in, in a ratcheting wrench. And it's called an E8. And this is from Gear Wrench on Amazon. Um, I use this to adjust uh, all the headlights because I'm always dealing with them. But like I said, a quarter inch socket will work uh, in. Um, I guess you could say alternative to this, but if you want to buy one of these, it can be helpful for adjusting uh, your lights. Obviously a work light is very helpful because you're kind of in a darker area and maybe some zip ties. I'm gonna, I may start shipping zip ties just to help you guys out, but you may want to get just a little pack of small uh, wire ties from Harbor Freight. So just be, uh, be ready and that's what you need. At the end of the day, guys, let's keep focus. This is two uh, basically a low beam and a high beam plug in and you're tapping a wire and then the install of the relay is super simple. So uh, don't get overwhelmed and overcomplicated in your mind. Just follow it step by step and I'm going to show you the way. I have everything set up over here. Um, got everything within good reach and so we're going to be working on the driver's side first. Um, I just prefer for the sake of following the video you start on the driver's side. Okay, so we're gonna start in the back of the, of the uh, headlight here, and you're gonna see some fasteners, and you're gonna see the motor assembly. Um, so there's a knob on the top of the motor here, and that is for uh, manually raising the lights, and that's what we're gonna do first, is we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna turn it, and it does take a, a second or two to turn before you start to get a reaction out of the light. Um, obviously, if your lights have any function issues, uh, making noise, grinding noises. Uh, if they don't go up and down correctly, uh, this kit's not gonna change that. So you're gonna have to look into a kit rebuild. Um, and the rebuilds are fairly easy uh, to do. Um, I will have videos on rebuilding both the 97 through 99 motors, as well as um, the later motors. So we're gonna bring this up until you feel a bit of resistance and you can tell that the headlight is all the way up. And then what we're going to see is we've got some Phillips heads. We've got one here on this side of the light, and we've got two here. One's in front of the hood because we have the hood up, and one is in the back. So we're going to grab that with a Phillips head screwdriver. Look underneath there. And like I said, a long screwdriver helps here. Okay, and so removal of the bezel is fairly straightforward. What we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of pull it forward and I am doing it one-handed here for the sake of the video, but it does kind of wiggle forward because of this clip. Uh, this is what you're trying to release. And you're gonna kind of pull the sides out. You're just gonna rotate that down inside until it comes up out. Okay, so the next step is we are gonna take off the top cover. The top cover has uh, four fasteners in total. You have one on this side, you have one on this side and you have two on the back side of the light. This is where you're going to need the T15. Uh, these are small Torx screws, very similar to uh, the screws that you just took out that were Phillips, but GM put. So you're going to take out each side first, and then you're going to go ahead and you're going to have to manually lower the light to access the back ones. You have these two right here. All right, so like I said, counterclockwise will bring you upward. You can go up to about halfway. That's about the safest position to go ahead and remove this cover. So this cover removes fairly easily. Just watch your paint around here. Obviously you can use some painter's tape and protect this if you are working for a customer, but you could see I didn't contact any part of the car and that came up and off of the car directly. So no problems there. And now what we can see is the stock headlight assembly. You've got your high beam and your low beam. You're gonna be making note of which color is which. So be prepared to be aware of which one the low beam is. That's gonna save you some time. And we're gonna be starting right here. So some cars that are in the Northeast, the Northern Territories, um, these can be a little bit corroded. So 
This is going to be one of the tougher parts because you can see um, as I put a wrench on here, you can see how it's spinning. So this is where we need to stabilize it. And so that's where the bit that I had discussed comes into play, but you can see it's, uh, there's not much room for it. And be careful not to drop it down into the bumper. Uh, it will annoy you. So just kind of uh, put your finger here. You can see it will rest. And this is a scenario where I have used um, a set of needle noses to kind of hold on to it or pliers. And then all you're looking to do is keep this from turning. Your, your, your main work is on this nut here. So you just want to stabilize this however you need to and remove this back nut. So with that basic method, some people do have angled Torx. Uh, they do make them, it kind of looks like an Allen uh, wrench, but it's, uh, it's a Torx, but it may even be tight for this. So um, I have tended to kind of do this method. Um, sometimes if you are really corroded, um, you will have to put quite an amount of pressure and uh, around this in order to hold it in place. Um, but that's all you need to do is hold it in place and you will have enough. So we're going to see if we can get this one off. Yep, that's coming no problem. So you can see I've, I've held this as tightly as I can and we have screwed that back nut off. And so now we're pretty free. So just be careful, go ahead and extract that, put it back in place and then go ahead and get this nut and put it with your other hardware. And so now this is the basically part of the up down adjuster that adjusts the headlight up and down. So that's why this is in a swivel here and that's what that's for. So uh, the next part that is critical once you have this off is we're gonna go ahead and reach around for the backside and we are gonna get this 10 millimeter nut in the back. So again, that 10 millimeter uh, box wrench will work great, but if you do have a 10 millimeter ratchet wrench, it does work better. It will save you some time. And again, if you get hung up, um, you can position this light wherever you want manually. Uh, with the knob to give yourself good access to get this initial uh, process done. So in my case with the ratchet wrench, I am actually uh, putting the wrench down into the well and I'm ratcheting this way. So it is going down into the well, um, whatever you need to do. Okay, so once you have that fastener out and you have this top piece out, what can happen is, is you're gonna do a little wiggle. And as you can see, uh, be sure not to stress this too far, just enough to get that out of there. You could swivel it down and now you can access these two 10 millimeters. You're going to take both of these out and then it's going to actually release the headlight bucket and you're going to be able to handle the entire headlight in your hand. You tell this car has not been apart. She's very tight. I would always suggest, you know, the big mistake a lot of people made when they had the frog eyes and the fixed light kits is they threw everything away. And I would say, even though, you know, I'm hoping my kit stays on your car <laughs> for a long time, it's just always good for value. You never know what the taste of your next, uh, the next owner will be. If you can keep the stuff in a box, I would always say keep it. Okay, so now you can see that my headlight is free. And we're going to rotate this up out of the way there. And so what I want you to note now is the side with the two mounting bolts, this is your low beam. You're going to see in this case, this has got kind of a, kind of a pale, I guess you could say a tan wire, and that's what's going to be responsible for our low beam. And then we've got a greenish wire responsible for the high beam. I'm not sure how consistent that is across all the years. That just is this particular car. This is a 1997. Um, in some cases you will need uh, a flathead screwdriver to work these connectors off. So this can be one of those procedures where you take an injury. Um, sometimes I will just put a flathead and just pull up slightly and kind of just work at it because you know, if these haven't been unplugged in some time, not, number one, they can break. But number two, if you get your finger under there, you could, you could get yourself. So I'm gonna, there we go. And wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. These are waterproof connectors. So they can be a little finicky, but we got that out of the way. So now, like I said, we have our low beam, we have our high beam, and we're gonna be accessing down in here uh, very shortly. But this is now your disassembled 
uh, headlight. So this is your left to right adjuster is attached to this. Um, and this is your up and down adjuster. Um, if you're gonna run into a problem with the kit, uh, adjusting it and getting it finalized, these uh, can be very, very problematic uh, because for one, they, get, they never get moved. Basically, people get the car from the factory and uh, they never adjust their headlights. So these have oftentimes literally never moved uh, from, since the car left the factory. And so they're not gonna wanna move now. Um, so these can be bought on eBay. Um, there is a particular side. There's a left side, a right side of the car, up, down adjuster, left, right adjuster. This can add a potential expense um, to your headlight installation. But unfortunately, um, look, it's just things that need taken care of. These are older cars. So in some cases I've seen them, I would suggest wetting them down with PB Blaster uh, or WD-40, but a penetrating lubricant is probably better because it'll work its way in. Um, this may be a case to where you wanna check them now, um, see if they move um, or just go ahead with your installation, but I would definitely suggest wetting down the threads. Okay, so now we're at the point, the headlight is out of the way and we're gonna be getting into releasing the armature uh, from uh, that uh, motor assembly. And we're gonna be looking at the differences between the 97 to about the middle of 2000 production. Not sure where that line is drawn. So we're gonna wanna look at the two differences. This is a 1997 and my Z06 is a 2002. So I'm gonna show you the differences and that's what's going to dictate uh, which hardware you use uh, in the next immediate steps and where to place the bracket. So let's look in here. I'm gonna try and bring my GoPro. And just so you're clear, uh, I'm gonna come back from here. We're going into the headlight uh, region. Okay, and then, so what we're looking at here is we have the armature coming from the lid. The lid's up here. And then we have this nut, which is attached to the motor. And then we have this nut here, which is uh, through a, a bolt that is attaching the motor. Um, this is another bolt that attaches the motor in the older cars, the 97 to 99, 2000 range. I, at some point in the mid 2000s, they changed this. And I think this is your main difference is your bolts that mount the motor are in a triangular uh, configuration like this. Um, so that's where there's gonna be a variation. And I'm gonna show you that's gonna change how we mount this bracket. So at this point, you're gonna to wanna to identify, are you the early version or the late? That's how we're gonna to refer to this from here. So this is gonna be an early version. Uh, the entire motor assembly is made of metal and this makes you an early car. Let's go look at a newer, uh, later car. Okay, this is now my 2002 Z06. And what I've got here is I've taken the armature off. I've got it out of the way. And so you can see there is no bolt here. There is one here one up here now and one here. So the triangular configuration goes upward. And what you can also see is this assembly here, this is all plastic. So they, they are much different. This motor has kind of got a, a rectangular shape to it as to where the other motor is around. This is gonna make you a later car. So if you have a later car, we're gonna be talking about this tab and the mounting differences. Okay, so in both cases, moving forward, we're gonna remove this nut and we're gonna wiggle off this armature. And then that's basically gonna free this entire assembly and allow it to move upward. At the same time, in the back, we have also uh, these white um, bumpers. We're gonna take uh, this one off here. Alrighty, so we've taken that nut off and that is a 10 millimeter, um, a ratchet would work best. Um, so we have that nut off. Now what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna do a little wiggling and you can, might use a flathead screwdriver if it has never been off. As you can see, it's kind of stuck on there. You wanna lightly take a flathead and you can just kind of work on it a little bit. Just be easy. Drop your screwdriver just like that. Be easy. We're just gonna work it forward. You can see I'm able to get some wiggle and that's what you're gonna wanna do is wiggle, wiggle, wiggle until it comes off that lug. Whew. Okay. So you can see there's a flat spot on here, top and bottom, and it was really seated over that really well. So now you've got this hanging and you should be able to lift this up pretty high now. And this is gonna be out of your way. And so what we're gonna do next on both um, this year and the later 
uh, models. You're going to remove this nut or in the O2's case, I think the bolt usually goes in this side and the nut will be on the back side that you'll have to hold and you're going to remove this out of the way. All right, we've got that stabilized on the back side. Okay, so to be clear for the earlier cars, you're going to remove this top nut and then you're going to take out this bottom bolt. So that bottom bolt comes out very easily on the earlier cars. And I will point out, you only have one more nut here to remove uh, the entire motor. So if you were wa uh, wanting to do any type of motor rebuild uh, for, and replace that gear, it'd be a great time to do it because it's super easy. And I can tell you that replacing the gear in the earlier cars, super easy. Uh, you just unbolt that back cap, slide it right out at this point, put the new gear and bushing in, grease it up, put it back together. It's so easy. If you haven't done it, honestly, I would consider doing it as just a preventative maintenance. It's going to make these lights work great from here, and it's just going to take it right out of the way. So I should be offering those on my website at this point. Um, if you haven't gotten one already, you may see uh, when you check out and check around the website, I have an option to add that bushing kit. Uh, it is a little bit of money because they're brass gears, but I think it's worth doing, and it's something that will never bother you again. Okay, so now let's look at the later cars. And like I said, you're gonna go ahead and still take this out, uh, this upper bolt, and you're gonna set that aside. And then in this case, there's gonna be a white stopper right here. You're gonna take off that white stopper. And uh, the earlier cars, like I said, there's a bolt down here you're removing. In this case, you're gonna take off this white stopper and that's what we're gonna use uh, to mount our bracket. Okay, so for the earlier cars, we're gonna go ahead and grab uh, one of our stops, like I pointed out, uh, let's make sure we grab the correct one and let me make sure I grab the correct one. So the one we're going to be grabbing for the driver's side, it has uh, the closed hole on the top and then this at an angle and then this open slot at the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to open our hardware bag here. And uh, we do poke a hole in these hardware bags for shipment because sometimes pressure will blow them open. Uh, very sorry if that happened to you. Um, hopefully it didn't. Let's go ahead and dump this out in a nice controlled area so we don't lose anything. And then I'm going to show you for uh, the earlier cars, you're going to want to configure your stop uh, like I show you with the longer shouldered bolt. So let me show you that now. So in this case, we're going to go through our hardware and we're gonna get our stop here. This is, let me get this out of the way so we can clearly see it. Um, this is the one you want. The one, there, there will either be one of two options depending on our supply. Uh, most of your bolts are 25 millimeters long, but then you have two 30 millimeter ones. For your early, uh, for your early cars, your 97 to mid 2000s, you're gonna want this longer uh, bolt um, for the stop configuration. So what I'm gonna tell you to do, is we're gonna take this off. We're gonna get our nut here. And if you go through your hardware bag, you will not have any washers. Oh. Oh. I'm running around. If you ever wonder why I'm out of breath, I'm, I just ran around the house. Anyway, let's get back to this. Okay, so this is what you're gonna want. Um, there should be uh, one washer like this. Uh, a lock washer, a nut, and then that longer bolt. Uh, if you by chance did not get one of these simple washers, please try and locate one. Uh, I understand some kits um, were sent without these. Uh, the reason that this is important is because this nut here is only tacked in place. It is not welded. Uh, the only reason it's there and tacked in place is to keep it from moving it is not there to absorb load. So what I'm gonna show you is I want you to load uh, your bolt in this configuration. Take the long bolt, go ahead and put on the first nut, screw it down, put on your lock washer next, then put on your flat washer last. And I want you to screw this up as far as possible. Um, in the case that you may get bolts that have threads all the way, just go up a good way to be sure that you have enough room. And then from there, you're gonna screw this into the stop. 
and you're going to go down all the way like so. And like I said, go ahead and screw that back all the way. We want to make sure we have as much room as possible. Okay, so that's your configuration. Flat washer, then lock washer, then nut all the way up with that much sticking out the bottom. The key is, is that this flat washer is going to put all its force into the tab and not this nut. You have to do it this way. And this configuration pertains to anyone as far as the later models or the earlier when it comes to the bolt uh, and washer, or the, excuse me, the nut and washer configurations. The only thing that changes is the bolt. Um, in the case of the later cars, what I want you to do is I want you to take um, one of the 25 millimeter long bolts and use it instead. Uh, the reason you have to do that is the later cars uh, need the bolt to sit lower in the stop. If you use the longer ones, uh, it will not work. If you happen to get bolts that are fully threaded, it'll be fine. But if you get the shouldered ones, it will hang you up. So let's just be clear. Um, you want the longer bolt for the earlier cars and you want one of the six uh, shorter bolts for mid 2000s and later, depending on how you've identified. So we are working on the white car, which is the 97 uh, to 2000 mid range. So let me show you what we have here. So there is one of these on this tab. You're going to have to remove that and just use a flathead screwdriver. And then you can see how we have this mounted. You're going to put the top through uh, here and mount it and then go ahead and tighten that down. So we're just going to go ahead and grab that from the back side. Okay, now that you're going to have this installed, uh, what we have noticed is because of this weld here, sometimes you can see this bows out a little bit. Hopefully that doesn't interfere. Uh, but what you're going to want to do is uh, on this particular step, you may have to, um, because this bolt is now in place, uh, you may have to manually uh, rotate the knob here. And what you want to do is get that lug into a position to where it allows you to reattach the arm itself. And you can see I've rotated this to where now it's in a more down position. And I'm going to grab this and we're going to go and this way. It's above uh, our stop. As you can see, it's, a, it's sitting above there. And so that's what you want. So this one was tough to get off of there. So I'm going to kind of do a wiggle, a wiggle, wiggle. And in some cases, um, you can come very close uh, to the edge of this. I've tucked this in as much as possible, but if you need to tuck it in more, just go ahead and see just a quick push on that. And you can see I've, I've gotten as good of an angle as I can get uh, to hit the top of that. And that's what we want. We want, we want this to be hitting uh, firmly on top of the, the bolt here to set our height. So go ahead and put the nut back on here and then we're gonna work on setting our height. Okay, so we are over on my O2 Z06. Uh, this is gonna be for the later cars, about mid 2000 and forward. Again, uh, just to reiterate, you're gonna be using one of the six uh, shorter 25 millimeter in length M6 by one bolts. Uh, coming from the bottom, uh, which I will try and show you here, Let's just remind you, we want the washer, the flat washer first, then the lock washer, then the nut, and then you want to screw this upward. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take this upward. As you can see here, I've taken that upward and then we're going to go ahead and just screw it down to be sure that we have enough clearance get, to get that arm on and have a reasonable amount of space to do an adjustment. So what I would suggest is you know, just take it down somewhere about here. That should be enough. You see how much I have through. And the reason for that is this one sits a little bit closer and you're going to see why right now. Okay. And so what we see in here is we're going to be using this tab. And so we're going to put the, the bolt back through here and we're going to mount the lower slot on the tab. That's why that some of them you know, it's, it's got a slot for a reason to go over the tabs on the older ones, but have room for the bolt on the earlier ones. So 
Let me go ahead and configure this and I'll show you how it looks in place. Okay, and as you can see, I have that tightened down. It's sitting on that uh, tab. We're gonna do the same thing, make an adjustment so that this is kind of facing on an upward uh, trajectory. Let me go ahead and adjust it. I'm gonna be turning clockwise and you can see that's bringing that into position to allow me some clearance to go ahead, swing this upward and we're gonna just wiggle that over. And obviously we're gonna have to lower the top a bit until we can line it all up. And you can see it slides right on there. Slides right on, no problem. Sorry with my camera. So we have it seated. And then we're gonna go ahead and just cinch that nut back on. And you can see we have some clearance here uh, to be able to do our adjustment. So go ahead and tighten that down now. So I've got that all tightened down and we've got it back in place. Sometimes you can support this with your hand up here as you're tightening it down so as to not put a bunch of force into the gear. Again, this motor is almost out. Great time to replace uh, the gears if you haven't. And uh, like I said, I'll have a video on gear replacement also on the website under the FAQ section, uh, as well as all over the place, YouTube and playlists and all that. So now we're uh, good to go. Uh, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna be setting the height and we're gonna be setting the height from the top of this frame rail here, basically to this edge. And that's what we're gonna be going for. So you're gonna wanna tape measure there. Don't know if I mentioned that in the tools, but uh, a nice square sometimes works, but a tape measure will be fine. So I have a tape measure here, it's magnetic. Uh, it's pretty nice from Milwaukee. We'll just get it right on the edge there. And you can see we're sitting, if you look dead straight at it, we're sitting at about five and an eighth. Uh, and we're gonna go up to uh, five and a quarter. So basically, I know some people are gonna say, oh, you said five and a half. Uh, I did say five and a half. And honestly, um, with the kit, the way it's configured now, and even before, I think we could have squeezed a little more out of it. And as we're approaching doing the bezels, um, I think we wanna get them just, just right. And so, you know, anybody that's obviously already installed, and if you do install and follow this video, if you have any issues, please reach out to me. We will redefine uh, the official height. But I think what we're gonna go for is kind of between uh, five and a quarter and five and a half. I, I, I'm gonna instruct you at this point to do five and a quarter. Um, if you have any issues, just go up slightly from there. Um, but let's go ahead now, and uh, I'm gonna show you how to adjust for five and a quarter. Okay, so what I would suggest is you're gonna get a tape measure here, just put it right on the edge. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna manually raise, using the knob in the back, we're gonna manually raise this to five and a quarter. Okay, now let me be clear on this measurement. Now, if you, if you measure it in the wrong position, uh, it's gonna vary the height. So let me be specific. So what we were, are talking about when it, uh, it refers to the measurement, we are talking about this leading edge it's very important that you're on the leading edge. If you're back here, it's gonna change the adjustment because obviously it'll be shorter back here, it'll end up taller up here. So let's go for five and a quarter right from this front edge and go ahead and manually adjust it back here on the knob until you reach that height. Okay, so now that you have uh, manually using the knob brought that, that top plate up to five and a quarter, what you're gonna do is you're gonna unscrew grab this camera, you're gonna unscrew uh, that bolt until it contacts the bottom of the armature. Okay, so once you have uh, that leading edge set to the appropriate height, what our goal is now is to, is to basically bring this bolt up until it contacts the back of this. And so that's just gonna be small movements. If you got big fingers, sorry, go borrow the wife, the, the son, the daughter, whoever needs to get in here, and you're just gonna spin this until we come into contact with the bottom of this arm. Now, what I would suggest personally is once you hit it, and like I said, if you need to bend inward, do that. Once you hit it, uh, bring this down. Try to get good solid contact, bring this down. You know, instead of getting in there, you can screw it from the bottom and that, that will help you, you know, because you do have some of the bolts sticking out. And this is just a matter of, you know, twist this one, make sure it's tight, screw this down, try not to turn one while you're turning the other. I mean, you can see I hold one with my thumb, spin the bottom one 
We just want to get it snug to where it feels like we have good contact. And this is, this is a scenario to where uh, you may be able to set uh, your, your height manually with the motor just under a quarter uh, so that maybe it'll bring up that slack. And so this may take one or two times. Uh, let's just try and get it snug and then we're gonna tighten down that bottom nut and we're gonna do a test from that point. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna kind of cinch it down and then we're gonna go cycle the lights to see if we can get that height that we need. Just gonna bring in a wrench and I'm gonna try and do this with the camera in place. Now what you can see is sometimes it will try to turn that top uh, bolt. You see I'm getting, I'm getting a little turn out of it. So I'm gonna have to put the camera down. Obviously you're gonna gr grab that one with your left hand and kind of hold it in place and then cinch this down until you get it tight. Okay, now that we cinched it down, I'm just gonna kind of, I'm gonna kind of manually just relieve some pressure. We're just gonna grab our tape measure and we're gonna do a verification. So let's bring it down right to the leading edge. You can see I'm about a 16th above and that's gonna happen. And I can tell you that a 16th is probably not gonna matter. Um, but what that can tell you is you can maybe set uh, the second time around if you don't quite get it, um, maybe go ahead and set uh, yourself about a 16th below five and a quarter and then bring that up so that when you're tightening and cinching down that uh, jam nut, that if you do lose a little bit of height out of that, that it will kind of even out. That's what I uh, would suggest. Okay, so I've grabbed the driver's side headlight. Um, like I said, this is gonna be the headlight with the two uh, mounts on the outside of the car. So by the fender, you're gonna have the ones with two bolts and then towards the center by the hood, uh, the mount is gonna have one bolt. So um, we're gonna kind of get this in order. So this extra wire is what we're gonna do first. And this is to power the halos. So this provides 12 volt to all the halos. So as long as this 12 volt tap works correctly, all the halos are gonna work uh, at one time. Um, if you ever have an, an issue to where you have no halos, it's gonna be related to this. If you have an issue where some halos are missing, there's another problem, but uh, this, if all your halos don't work, it's gonna be related to this. So I will go ahead and sit the headlight right here on top. Um, and what I'm gonna be grabbing is one of these, and this is your T-tap. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna prepare this. We're gonna sit the headlight. Just be careful, try not to drop anything. Just don't tug on anything. Um, but what we're gonna try to do is, so this T-tap opens in the back, just like this. And you can see there's a little loop in there, which the wire is intended to go through. Now, some suppliers, there's a variation in the thickness. They're not consistent sometimes with the thickness of this wire. So while this is designed for this gauge of wire, um, the, the insulation can vary. So if you have any issues, you have a couple options here. Um, you can definitely cut that loop out with a little snippers, toenail clippers, dikes, whatever you wanna use. You can cut that loop out if you have an issue, or you can just take a razor blade and kind of shave uh, just lightly along the insulation, and it will um, definitely go back in there much easier. But in this case, what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, insert this in the back, and let's see in this case if it fits. Um, sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. I pitched it kind of upward and there we go. It slid in very nicely. And what we're looking for is to be sure there's a, there's a crimping system inside of here. You can see if you're looking down the backside of it, uh, there's some copper um, pieces. Uh, it looks like copper or probably stainless steel. And we just wanna be sure that that's seated all the way in there. And so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our pliers and we're gonna get a nice firm clamp down on that. We don't wanna crush it, we want it to lock. And so we can look on the bottom, it looks locked. And so that's all we need to do. That's gonna be a good connection now. And now we're gonna open up this front side, which you may have to work at a little. What this is going, going to do is a wire can go through here and this is gonna clamp down on that wire. And so that's what's gonna, give us a tap into 12 volts 
positive and then run that 12 volts up this line and power the halos. So I'm gonna show you where to connect that 12 volt. So let me move the light around here. Now, you, you have two options when it comes to 12 volt um, because you have two sets of bulbs. So this bulb here uh, is your light that coincides with out here. And then you have your DRL, which is down here, and that goes to a three pin plug underneath here. Now, quite honestly, I have directed people um, to tap the middle wire down here, but I can tell you that there is a brown wire and it is on this plug here. There's only two wires going to it. One's black and one is brown. This one is easier to reach. So another option is if this is hard for you to reach or if you're having any issues, you can twist that. That twists a couple degrees. You can twist that and take that out and look, you can bring it up much closer to yourself. And see, I have very good access um, to this uh, wiring in the back. You should not be tapping a headlight plug. I've had a lot of people do this. Uh, if this happens and you tap uh, this, which people think is brown, uh, then obviously your halos are gonna go on and off with your low beams. That's not correct. So this is a parking light. This lights up and gets power when you go in the parking mode. Therefore, uh, when this turns on, your halos will turn on. So that's what you want. Okay, so as you can see, I have that tapped in place. Uh, I have crimped that down. And so we should have 12 volt through this line. So now this is the way that the halos work. So these halos on the low beams get their ground through the low beam plug. The low beam plug should be marked, uh, but if it is not, the low beam is connected to this Y uh, connector. So just follow it down to determine which one is your low beam. In this case, it would be this one. So the ground for these two halos comes through here. So if your power is correct and I plug in this low beam and the supply of ground comes through this plug, you will have two halos in parking mode. Uh, also, if you then connect the high beam plug, it gets ground for the high beam halo through the high beam plug. So that's where if you only have some halos lighting, it's gonna be related to the ground. If you have the, the highs off, it's gonna be related to the plug. If you have the lows not lighting, it's gonna be related to the plug. If none light, no matter what you do with these plugs, it's gonna be related to the power tap. So what we're gonna do is plug these in and we're gonna do a test. Okay, so as I said uh, earlier, keep track of which is which. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the tannish wire is low and the green is high. So I'm gonna connect them to the corresponding plugs. Like I said, we're gonna identify this one as being the low beam because it has the Y connector and then that goes to this plug. So we're gonna connect this to the low and we're gonna start with the tabs on the top. So this is where we're gonna have an issue. Some are gonna work with the tab connected in, some are gonna to have to work with the tab turned to the bottom. So what we're gonna do is start with the top. Okay, as you can see, I have the tabs clicked in. I have the low beam connected to this one. I have the high beam connected to this one. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit this off this is kind of the tricky part. You can do one of two things. You can sit it down in here where it's safe. I would often suggest that. Sit it where it's safe because this may move. If you actuate the headlights on and off, this may suddenly come down. So we wanna look over everything, make sure everything's out of the way. We're not gonna damage anything. We've got this tight, we're past that, so you're fine to cycle these for the first time. So what, what our goal is to do is we're gonna turn the headlights on and then we're gonna go back to parking mode first and then we're gonna come back and take a look. What I would suggest at this point, uh, because what we don't wanna do is we don't wanna light these up long-term with these, these plastic protectors on. It's up to you whether you leave it on uh, because obviously you could expose yourself to scratching it. But what I would suggest at minimum is pull them up enough for this test, because you can obviously put them back on. Just pull them up. We don't want them, because they will generate some heat. And like I said, you can see that this is sliding around. We kind of want to have a decent place to sit it. 
they'll generate some heat out of the centers when we turn the lights on. So let's just flip them up a little bit. Like I said, everything's out of the way. This armature is going to be going up and down, so nothing's going to hit in here. I'm going to make sure when this armature cycles, it's not hitting anything. So let's do our first test. This is very important. This has to work correctly. Okay, so step one, we're going to go into parking mode only. And you can see the dash lights come on because we are in parking mode. Okay, so this is what I have. Now, this is a classic condition that's going to get into troubleshooting, but as you can see, one halo is very bright and the other two are dim. This one is correct. That's the way it should look. This indicates that the tab needs to be pointing down. So we're going to go shut the lights off. Okay, I've now shut those off. We're going to bring the kit up here. I'm going to put it back in between. I'm trying to do this one-handed. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the low beam. The low beam was the issue. We're going to take this, remove it. Let me try and get it apart. Okay, we're going to remove it. And the tab was up. We're going to turn it over. Tab down. Okay, as you can see, the tab lock now will not be in the clasp. The tab is on the bottom. So this is correcting the polarity. The issue with this was, is that some year Corvettes put the positive on one side and then the ground on the other. It, it varies over the years. So unfortunately we can't locate the tab every time where it needs to be. So you're just gonna have to uh, rely on the weather seal. Uh, later on, if you wanted to zip tie this together, just to be sure it never came apart, that's up to you. I think most people are experiencing that it's okay, but like I said, you can electrical tape around this. You could probably even put a, a zip tie around it. It would create enough friction. But we're gonna go ahead and lay these back down in here. Let's get these flipped up just to be sure. And we're gonna do another test. So something very interesting is uh, happening here. So now we have clearly very bright halos, but the issue was this one was actually dim before we couldn't tell. Uh, so these are actually really bright. So this one, if you are looking at it, it's hard to show on camera, but I think you can tell two are now bright, bright. And so these are actually very bright. So even though this one looked brighter than those initially, it was because they were dividing down a very weak ground signal. Uh, it doesn't take much. So now we realize this one also needs flipped over. So we're going to do that now. So now the key here is we're going to take this out. Now the key that we're going to learn here is that when we do the other side, we kind of already know that it's going to be tabs down. So this tabs down, now we're going to put this tab down. Okay, so now we have tabs down on both plugs. You can see the tabs are at the bottom. They're not locking. So tabs are down. We're going to put this back, back in the well, just to the parking. And we have got mega bright halos. So that's a good sign. They're all even, they're all bright. We've got good positive power on all of them. Now we're gonna go to low beam. And we're, we've got another door up already, but you can see it came up more. And we're gonna take a glance down. It's gonna be hard to tell on camera, but our two low beams are now lit. Now we're gonna go to high beam. That's just gonna pull forward because I'm reaching in from this direction. Now what we have, these two are not lit in the center anymore. The high beam is now lit only. These are not lit. You can see that's not lit, that one is. So we have a correct configuration now. Now you're gonna to wanna to watch as you shut these off, they are gonna go back down. So we will have to manually raise again, but just be cautious of that. But as you see, now we've got that one going up high and we've got this one in the correct sleepy position. So that's correct now. So we're gonna to have to bring this up in position now until you feel a little bit of resistance. Don't force it because you're gonna just put stress on the gears. And what we're gonna do is we're now going to put in the resistor if you have the resistor. So you only need one. Uh, some people think you need two, you do not. You only need one. And so the key here is uh, we have to maintain the same test. And so the, the possibility will exist that when we put this in, we now put that ground uh, in the wrong position again and we get weird halos. So when we put this in place, um, we're gonna go ahead and have to test it one more time. 
And then if we have any issue, we're going to be turning this plug over. So uh, what I'm going to do is try and maintain the, the same configuration. I'm going to keep the tab opposite of this lock. And then when I go ahead and plug it back in, I'm going to keep the tab opposite. Uh, this one actually, well, it shows how my supplier has gotten smarter. Look at that. They put tabs on both sides. So we were not going to know. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to unplug the low beam. This goes in place of the, the uh, in between the low beam, I should say, not in place of. This is gonna connect to the car, this is gonna connect to the kit, and then you're gonna have this hanging in there. And again, you're just gonna be looking at the brightness of the halos to determine if you have this configuration right. Uh, if you don't, like I said, just take this one, flip it over, and it's gonna be correct. Doing my halo test, I have nice, consistent, bright halos, all three, uh, same brightness. So let's talk about the resistor real quick. So the issue with the resistor is some people run the resistor uh, because what it does is it allows the headlights to retract and the headlight control module to basically see a big shift in amperage draw. Um, the old bulbs, the original bulbs that came in the C5, the way that that module worked is it basically, it saw the differential in, in amp draw and that's what told it to retract the lights and shut the power off best as I understand it. Uh, what happens when you don't have the, the resistor, when you go from low beam to off, you could get them in a weird state to where they stay on. And I have an image here from an older video that I'll put in that you'll see what happens. And what that can do is drain your battery. So uh, in that scenario, if you don't run the resistor, what you need to do is go into high beam and then off. And what that does is it pulls max amperage and then shuts it off and they will retract. Some people, when their car is running, uh, they, they can get a retraction without the resistor and no problems at all. What you need to be very, very cautious of though, is these resistors, they're turning electricity into heat. This little case here that they come in, it's like an aluminum. It looks like if you're familiar with old audio, it's like an amp. It has heat sinks and things on it and it's made of aluminum. So it's just made to get mega hot. So you don't want this orange, this, this anodized orange thing to touch anything. Um, so it's up to you how you mount it. Some people um, will drill holes and use self tappers to the frame rail to do all kinds of stuff. Uh, and another configuration, uh, which I will probably do here, is you just kind of want to let it hang in open air to where it's not touching anything. So when the headlights go up and down, it's kind of just dangling, uh, you know, and, and not touching anything and you'll be totally safe. All right, so I'm gonna show you how I configured uh, with some zip ties. Uh, I may start including a few zip ties into the shipments. Uh, it's not something I've done to this point. So what I've done and the way that I've configured this, let me kind of sit this down here. Um, is in order to keep this safe, I've just kind of suspended it. Um, if this is coming from the headlight plugs themselves. Uh, this is their wiring. I just got close to it and I zip tied it and that way it's gonna be hanging. This is all metal here. So it's in no danger of interacting with anything plastic because everything on this side is metal. So I would just, you know, just do that to where it's hanging free. It's not gonna to touch anything. I think you're gonna be plenty safe right there. Obviously you could do whatever you want, but this would be plenty fine. Uh, same with the um, plugs themselves. I just wrapped uh, two zip ties around in this case because I don't have long ones, but it's fine. Uh, I'll always snip your ends off as close as possible because you will cut yourself uh, by accident, but that's how we have things configured. So from here, we are going to be um, mounting these up uh, into place, kind of pushing all the wiring where it needs to be. Okay, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take the two bolt side and we're gonna sit this on an angle, as you can see. That's gonna be the easiest way and you don't wanna stress this joint out because this is your adjuster. These will pop off um, if you put too much strain on because you see they, they don't have a ton of flexibility. So just put that sideways like that. This is kind of how you took out the stock one. And then we are gonna go ahead and grab uh, whatever's left. And, and in this case for the uh, older cars, the 97 to like mid 2000s, um, you're going to be left um, with all 25 millimeter length. So in this case, um, we're going to start with this lower position, and this is deep um, right here. So if you have uh, an uh, 2000 to the 2004 that has all the different configuration and you have that long bolt, that's where you're going to put it is in this bottom position. That long one's going to go here. If you have an older car, you're just going to take one of the three, and it will it will make it. It will just be a little bit uh, shorter, a little bit closer, but plenty of threads there still. 
So what I will tend to do is I will get one of the other bolts, I'll take everything off of it, and I'll just push it through and then I'll keep my thumb on it. And so that will keep it firmly out towards the back. And then when you go through here, you can just kind of line it up. Obviously I don't have my extra hand because I'm holding a camera, but just line it up like so. And I dropped that. Um, so you can see how I'm kind of holding it like this and you're gonna put a lock washer and then the nut. So once you have it uh, just threaded on a couple threads, uh, these will stay aligned. As you can see, there's a hex shape. So once you get a few uh, you know, threads on there, it's gonna stay in place. Just kind of support it, don't let it go. And we're gonna put another bolt and then lock washer and nut on the back of this one. So as you can see, I threaded those on. Um, they're captured in there. That'll wiggle around. Just take up most of the slack. It will make tightening it down easier and it'll just kind of settle into place there and you'll see that it'll take up some of that. And then you're just gonna tighten this down. Take your wrench, um, you're just gonna tighten this. And the goal is to flatten out the lock washers and just feel a nice firmness. You don't wanna crank. Okay, so looking in here, we have got uh, lock washers. We've got these, n these nuts. <laughs> got him. Uh, these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I hesitated, but um, so we got these tightened down. And um, like I said, you, you don't want to over torque these, but you're definitely going to feel some resistance. Uh, what I like to do when I'm tightening is just hold the wrench up here. And I mean, you'll, you'll definitely feel it stopping you. Uh, at this point, uh, with everything out of the way, uh, we're going to go ahead and bring the assembly up. And uh, we're going to get this inner mounting point here. And then last is going to be this spot. So sometimes you'll just have to align this pad. Now, one thing I want to point out with this pad, there are two holes, as you can see. You do not want to mount in the lower hole. You're mounting in the upper hole, not this one, this one. If you mount in this one, they're going to angle down. They're going to look a little funny. So be sure you get into this upper hole and mount there. And again, same configuration. We're going to have, we're going to have a, a lock washer and a nut. Like I said, you may have to adjust that pad. Um, that is your uh, left and right adjuster. And you're gonna wanna align this top piece. I'm gonna show you here. Once you have that uh, bolt in place right here, you can see, um, you're gonna wanna go ahead and, and push this stud through and this is gonna align everything and keep you aligned with this pad. So I'm gonna sit this GoPro that doesn't wanna sit on my leg. We're just gonna kinda work its way in there. And now we're pretty aligned and you can see it's gonna stay there. And so we're gonna put our uh, nut and uh, lock washer on there, tighten it up. Okay, and lastly, you wanna replace that 10 millimeter nut. And obviously you might have to use the bit uh, to hold this still, but see now you have nice access here, so. It's always nice getting to the end of a side and you're really gonna understand obviously, now you've got a good understanding of how to do this. Now you can see this is very tight. You're not gonna have any flutter out of this car. This is nice and tight. All the assemblies uh, seem to be in good order. Um, but what I do have is I have this stop here. And so what this was kind of designed to do is just create another point of contact. Uh, the issue is that we have found that back here where these are going to go, uh, these cars are not consistent. So it's hard for me uh, to make one size fits all. But uh, the way that we're going to do this is based upon your current height here. What I would suggest is moving to the back. And first of all, let's go ahead and lower the light down by turning this clockwise. And let's go ahead and lower it down. And what we're trying to do is get access to these white stops back here. And you can see there's two of them as we're lowering the light. There's one here and there's one here. This stop uh, has a front and a back. And what I would like is for the, the O, there's a letter O on this. Uh, it should be facing the windshield. 
and I would like the O on top, and that's what you want. It will put more material on top than on bottom, and that's what we're trying to do is create another contact point. Very easy to slide off. Um, this one can kind of be accessed. So this one can kind of be accessed through this back area here. It's probably the easiest way. And I would definitely suggest keeping these. Like I said, keep everything. Uh, if you can put it in a box, wrap, you know, wrap up whatever you need to. I, I just think it's, it's, if you have the space, if you can keep it, I would say keep everything. And so then what we're going to do, like I said, uh, with the O on top and facing the windshield, I would suggest um, what I find is that this side has a bit more uh, clearance than this side does. So we have two options here. And like I said, the metal stops are doing all the work. With the O facing the windshield, uh, these push on very uh, nicely, <laughs> as you can see. And, uh, you know, you could push them on uh, pretty much all the way. Um, they bought them out in the back. We're going to go ahead and cycle the lights one more time. We're going to do a cross-check measurement to be sure that this isn't stopping them early. Uh, we want that firm contact with the metal stop, and we want all the load going into the metal stop itself. Um, and the way that we're going to know that it's in contact or close is, which I can assure you it's going to be, um, is that it's, it's going to be pretty much not wanting to move if you put your finger on it. So I'm going to cycle them up and uh, make sure we have contact. And with that, we can put the cover back on and go to the other side. Okay, so I've put the lights in the uh, low beam position, then clicked back uh, to uh, parking lights. As you can see here, we have the stop in place. And uh, we, we do have what feels like just very light contact. And that's all we want. And so this is just going to create another piece of stability that keeps you from having any flutter whatsoever. Um, what I would suggest doing now that you have these mounted is go ahead and just, just do one more cycle test. Uh, this is your first side now completed. Uh, make sure you remove uh, these plastic covers like so. And uh, so, you know, at this stage, what I'm going to do is I want to, uh, so accessing this can be a little bit difficult. This is your adjuster. Um, obviously they, they kind of designed it to come in from the side here. It's not the easiest design. And then you've got this one here. So um, right now looking down at it, I can see that it seems like we've got a pretty, uh, a pretty, uh, I would say towards the center of the car. This is forward facing obviously, cause this is angled. So I feel like these are in a fairly good position uh, as they were. So uh, we're probably pretty cl uh, close, which is beneficial because some people's are way out and they've got to do adjustments and that will lead you. So if you get lucky enough that your adjusters don't need to be moved, uh, these have a widespread. So um, we're going to go ahead and just cycle them um, through the range here. And like I said, go through your final test. We want low beams. We want just a high beam here only, and halos should stay on through all cycles. Parking, low beam, high beam, halos should never change. And if you're good there, then go ahead and put on your top cover again. And with that, guys, we're done with that side. And so I hope it didn't take up too much time. Uh, what we're going to do now is you're going to repeat this process on the other side. Uh, obviously, if you have any issues on the other side with the way that the lights light up, you remember on the initial install of this side, how I talked about how you need to turn the plugs over. I guarantee you, as long as your power tap is good, that's your only issue is just figuring out that configuration of turning them over until you have a matching side. And then just go ahead and move to the relay install, which we're going to do right now. Okay, guys, so we are over on the passenger side of the car. And let me, let me be clear. Um, do not do this step unless you have 100%, 100% proper function on both the driver's side and the passenger side. We went through the driver's side. If you go, went ahead and went forward on the passenger side, you should have identical function. Everything should work properly, uh, as described. So what you should have on both sides is in parking mode, all the halos should be lit. In low beam, you should have two outers on each side, plus all the halos lit. That includes the high beam, all of them. Then when you switch to high beam, you should just have the inside lights towards the hood, one on each side, 
and all the halos lit. Installing this relay will now make everything light up on high beam. We're gonna disconnect the battery and just for safety, because we're gonna be working with some power points and inside the fuse box, taking things in and out. We don't wanna cause any damage, any sparks. So that's why you have to have everything squared away because we're gonna disconnect the battery. We can't be testing those lights. And so we're gonna put in the relay completely. Then we're gonna reconnect the battery Test everything out and you should be done. Let's go ahead and remove the, the uh, negative battery cable. Okay, and you're gonna wanna tuck it out of the way to make sure we don't have any accidental disconnects and cycling of things. So now that you're good, this is the one point we're gonna be working with here. And we're gonna be working with this stud back in here. I know it's hard to see, uh, but this stud um, it connects to a bracket, it seems, on the earlier cars. On the later, it does not. So the issue uh, that we have found, and it's probably gonna be the only uh, mildly finicky part potentially with the relay. So because the way Corvettes are built, uh, because there is a lot of aluminum on board and because they have a space frame construction, um, it's hard to find ground points that are reliable. So. Uh, because of the way that the stock uh, factory, I should say, uh, connecting point to the negative side of the battery is, uh, it typically has that side post, which is not conducive of adding uh, a ring connector or something like that. If you have that, I, I would say you probably could use the negative side of the battery and it would be fine. Uh, in most cases, it's not going to be easy for you to connect there. So this grounding point on the firewall is about the best one, but you're definitely going to have to scuff and prep the nut to try and get a good connection. So. Uh, most problems pertaining to the relay uh, have to do with this negative connecting point. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and take that nut off and take this power point off and then we're going to move forward. So the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to take our relay. Um, the current relays that have been shipping with Night Drive TV kits um, since I would say May of 2022 uh, were of this design maybe a little bit later to where you know you had um, a red and black wire that had connections uh, like this and then you had a red and black wire that had angle connectors like these. Um, the older relays um, this black wire is white on the older relays and this red wire here with the angle connector is blue on the older relays. These are the same these, the red and blacks, the one with the, uh, the uh, fuse and obviously your ground. But yes, on the older relays, if you happen to be watching this video, this black will be white with an angle connector and this red will be blue with an angle connector. But yours should look like this. So go ahead and follow along. Okay, so first thing is we're gonna go ahead and remove this nut and we're gonna remove this nut here. And we are gonna apply our negative side here and our positive side here. Okay, so the key uh, with, I'm showing you up close here, the key with this uh, ground stud is you're gonna wanna scuff the back of this. It's, it's very hard for these to obtain a ground. So I would suggest scuffing this with sandpaper or something along those lines. Okay, so as you can see here, um, I've given this a good sanding. And so the outer uh, ring has some sanding to it and then it's a little shiny towards the center also. Uh, the reason that this is an issue is because uh, you have a thing called galvanic corrosion. And when uh, aluminum and steel are in contact with each other, it creates a corrosion. So they tend to put a coating uh, over nuts and bolts uh, to basically uh, avoid that from happening. Now, this, this is more prevalent in the thread areas. I, I would assume that the process of just coating these, you can't choose to just do the thread. So um, in this sense, uh, because the, the uh, grounding point here is kind of in contact with the back of this. Um, that's where you just want to make sure that it's making contact. So it's typically easiest to screw that nut in place and then kind of slide this behind it and then go ahead and tighten it the rest of the way versus kind of hold it in place the whole time. Um, it'll help you kind of get it cinched down a little bit. And then once you feel it getting close with your fingers, let's go ahead and finish it. Just be aware of that. Give it a little light tug, light. Alrighty. And then here, same, we're just gonna go ahead 
And we're gonna put this down over this spot here. This is gonna be no big issue. Just go ahead and slide it in. And may have to spread it out just a wee, but it fits on there nice, as you can see. And then find your nut. Hopefully you didn't lose it like I just did. And now this is in contact with obviously some non-coated things. So you don't have to worry about any scuffing here. Um, just go ahead and get that back in place. Okay, so now that that's done, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open up this fuse box here. You're gonna unscrew this top. There's typically a tab back here. We're gonna take that and sit it out of the way. Okay, we've got two fuses, which I'm gonna throw on screen here and I'm gonna identify which ones you need to uh, work with. But there's also a guide on the back of this and you can see it is gonna be number nine and number 10 that we're concerning ourselves with. And number nine is uh, high beam right, and number 10 is low beam left. And so we're basically gonna be using these uh, points to uh, essentially just tell the car to light up the high beams and keep them on when the low beams are activated. So remove those now. You'll probably need a pair of needle nose to do that. Once you've removed those fuses, then you're just going to go ahead and wrap around. There's a slot in the bottom, as you can see, and that slot goes through one of those prongs and then just allows you to tap into that fuse. And then this, uh, this part will stick out of the top. Okay, so this is what you should have. Once you put that uh, tap on there, it should look like this. Now, what I will point out is the bottom of the fuses are kind of V-shaped. And when you put this tap around it, it is gonna cause a bit of a restriction. Just be sure to push them all the way down, get them seated, and you'll have no problems. Lots of people have these. Some have said, hey, you know, they don't quite seat all the way. That is true, but you can push down and just be firm with it and they'll be fine. So one thing I do is once I reseat them, I just kind of hold the, the needle noses together and just push down firmly. Just make sure you're spreading out the load there and get them seated back in place. So now we're gonna bring our relay kind of over in this region. And the goal is to kind of run these wires right through about here. And we're gonna be connecting the black wire to number nine right here. Be sure that you line up uh, that you can see that there, it, there is a space that can kind of go between the insulation by accident and not make a good connection. So be sure that you're getting it right on the inside there so that it clamps on and is firm on the, uh, the male side here. So go ahead and put the black on number nine and the red on number 10. Okay, so now with this in place, we're gonna do a test. And so what we wanna do is just kind of move everything out of the way. You're gonna reconnect the negative uh, battery cable, and then we're gonna do a headlight test. So the best way to be sure that you have them in is just look from the side. You can look from the side here, make sure you have that firmly in place. Uh, same thing here, you can look and you can see that it's wrapped around. And so with the battery reconnected, what we're gonna do is do a test of the lights. We should now have all six on high beam. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, and with a successful test, now we're gonna wrap this up. Uh, some people ask a few questions when it pertains to the wires, where do the wires go? So, you know, I did relief cut my um, fuse box. I'll turn it over. I did relief cut my fuse box right here, I believe, and that allowed a bit of clearance uh, right along here, and that's where I brought the wires out. But um, there is a weather seal around here, so you could let them hang over, but it will disrupt that weather seal. So it's up to you on how you want to run that. I'm going to leave that up to everybody individually. Uh, some people ask, where do I put the relay? Well, there's not much of a mounting position uh, here, so you could pull up this stud, uh, and obviously you can see it, it fits over the stud, so you could pull that up. That's a 10 millimeter. You could sit this down here because uh, it does fit over it, put the nut back down, and so it would mount it there, and then tuck your wiring with, uh, you know, wire tires or, or whatever uh, you feel like. So that concludes the install. Uh, we can now go ahead and put the headlight covers back on, and that completes uh, the install of your Night Drive TV headlight kit. So guys, I hope that wasn't too bad. Um, one thing I do want to talk about real quick is uh, the adjustments 
of the headlights. And so um, what I have here is a, a wrench from Gear Wrench, and it's a ratcheting wrench. Um, and basically it is uh, two sizes and it's something you may have never heard before. Uh, you can get this on Amazon. And I would say if you have a C5 and you're gonna be adjusting headlights, you probably wanna get one of these. Um, it has a, two sizes, an E6 and an E8. So the E8 size, it's basically like a socket for a Torx bit, basically. It's like a Torx bit inside, but it, when it's classified as like an outside, a socket, it's considered E8. And so this is a ratcheting wrench. And so you can use these, the E8 side, on the adjusters, or you can use a quarter inch socket. Uh, it will fit those adjusters also. So if you have, it's a little bit easier. I tend, I bought this and I have this, but, um, but yeah, you can use a quarter inch socket or quarter inch uh, wrench. It will also fit that. And in this car's case, the adjusters were fine. Uh, the lights seem to be on the correct level. Um, so there's not gonna be much adjustment here, but Overall, uh, I hope you had an easy time following this video. If you have any issues, only as a last case scenario, you can always uh, ask questions directly. Um, the only reason I say that is because I do get a lot of messages and so it's, it's hard for me to manage. Sometimes I uh, struggle to get back to everybody. Occasionally I'll miss an email here or there. So um, there is the Night Drive TV Corvette Enthusiast group on Facebook. I would say that's the best place to go post a question and be a member if you have any issues. Always document your issue. Uh, if you have lights not coming on, something like that, take a few pictures of your phone in uh, parking light position, low beam position, and high beam position, and we can quickly uh, assess and diagnose what you have wrong. I will say I test all these uh, before they're shipped. We're very, we have a two-step QC process to be sure that everything that goes out is, is okay, but you're always gonna have a, a small potential for some type of problems in shipping because you know how UPS treats things. So. That's it. You shouldn't have any problems from here. I super appreciate you guys supporting Night Drive TV and installing this kit. I have a lot more ahead uh, for C4s and C6s even, carbon fiber parts, uh, other lighting that's in development. This is December, or, well, this is February 2023 right now. And um, so that's when you're watching this video. Always look out for new things. Please subscribe to Night Drive TV YouTube channel. And uh, that'll be it, guys. I appreciate you following along. I'll see you next time.